we're talking about focusing. What are you concentrating on this year, both professionally and personally? What makes you lose your focus? If you aren't sure, how can you figure out what to prioritize? Learn how to focus as we begin the new year and start our month focusing on being your most awesome self. Does your clutter own you? Unclear your clutter inside and out. We'll teach you how to become aware of your clutter along with action steps to declutter and create the life you desire. Come on, let's get started. Happy New Year. Hey, everyone. Today's episode was inspired because I'm feeling really good that I accomplished all three of my major business goals last year. They were to get the books done. We're in the final process of that. Retooling my website and narrowing the direction of my business. I am very excited about that. It took all year. And you know, I talk about manageable steps and it's about being able to focus and being able to continue and work on something weekly to get things done. I was able to do it because I kept on it. I had my focus and I knew what my priorities were. My physical health is my number one personal priority. If you've listened, you know, I spent a ton of time on spiritual health, reading, listening, worked with mentor classes, all that. Physical health has to take priority this year. I don't want to be a hot mess when I'm older. As you age, I don't know how old you are listening, but you, things change. You notice things. So that's my number one priority. In my business, I've already have outlines for other books that I need to do. And again, with the day-to-day stuff and focusing on the new direction of my business. I, the good news is I did so much heavy lifting on the books, it will be less of a challenge to put them together. So I have goals for business, but they aren't the huge ones. And what's good about that is it's settled a bit. I can just kind of do the business and focus on my health because that has to take priority. Today's episode was also inspired because I work with so many people who are overwhelmed because they're trying to do too much. They're not focused, they're scattered, and they're going in a million different directions. Is that you? Deciding what to focus on. First, decide what you need to focus on. You may choose to do it like I do and have personal and professional goals you'd like to accomplish. You might have your focus more decided for you. For example, if you're at risk for diabetes, your health may need your immediate attention. Or if you're in debt, getting your financial house in order may be what the priority is. Clear any clutter you can. It's the new year. Any clutter that you are able to release is going to make the process easier on what you choose to focus on. It will help you mentally because if you're kind of scattered and you clear your clutter, you'll have more mental focus. Think about being in a room full of stuff. It can sometimes be really hard to concentrate. So if you're clearing that physical clutter, that's going to help you mentally. And anytime you get rid of clutter in any area, it allows you to realize, okay, this is what my priorities are. Maybe it's time to let go of the dream dasher in your life so you can tackle a passion. You know, there was an alumni, I went to a small women's college, and it's kind of disappointing that she didn't even respond, even if she thought my proposal, and I did a proper letter, I talked to people, I had it reviewed, so I wasn't putting out something that was just really inappropriate. But I didn't allow her saying no for me to say yes. So if you have someone that's a dream dasher in your life, it's time to say hasta la visa, baby. Schedule time to figure out your focus. If you make an appointment, you're most likely to do it. Maybe you think about what's important in the park or in your meditation room. Get out of thinking and believing it needs to be done in an office, whether it's your home office or work office, and get a fresh perspective in a new space. Maybe it does need to be in the office so you're clear but be open to the possibilities. 
Get all your thoughts and ideas and what you think priorities are down on paper. Now I'm old school, guys. I like to write it down. You could do it on an app. You can make a list on your computer. I have to tell you, as I have been editing, I've been doing a ton of editing even after others edit. I could edit till the cows come home and don't worry, guys. We're close to having all that completed. But I was amazed at how much different and easier it was. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't catch that on the computer. So for me, writing it down with pen and paper works. But get it down. Remember all those people, and maybe it's you going in a million different directions? Write all of it down. I like this because it's a brain dump. It feels like I lose a 10 pounds at least afterwards. Just get it all down. Once you've written it, categorize it. You may choose something broad like personal or professional, home business health, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever makes sense to you. As you've categorized them, when reviewing what you think some focus and priorities might be, how does it align with your life? If you are going back to school, then writing the next great American novel probably doesn't make sense because your priority and focus has to be on your schoolwork. You could also rate everything once you've categorized it on a scale of 1 to 10, which 10 being the most important. What would you need to think about category rise, how you would rate your priorities? Importance, time, cost, potential outcome, joy. What will it be taking away from? If you assign a number, and create a bunch of different categories, and that's most likely going to give you a better idea of what is it that's really important. How to focus. Some people say only focus on one thing at a time. Some say no more than one item for each category you've determined. I have read not to focus on more than one thing. I mentioned my three big business goals and I had one personal goal last year. The business stuff was intertwined a bit, so I felt it was doable, and I had a single focus personally where all my effort was. Some people say three to five big goals for a year is fine. That's what I had. Most of these suggestions are around the same number, mainly one, but not more than three, not more than five. I'd suggest not going for more than five goals a year. Be realistic. If you are a million projects person, or this is hard for you, do one or two things for the year and get in the habit. Start building those focus muscles. I suggest choosing to do one or two goals well instead of five meh. Pick something and begin. Just start one of the things you want to do and go from there. So for instance, my new business direction. I write down, okay, this is what I want to do. Break down anything into manageable step. Well, some of my broader categories for the new business direction were writing web copy, creating a class, creating checklist, meeting with some people that would be good for the business, making updates to the website. And then within those broad categories, I would break things down into manageable step. And how I like to do it is because I have a legal pad, just if I had new things, okay, I have four steps off the top of my head I knew I have to do. So then I would write it on the page, then flip the page and add it there. And so for the next four weeks, I had something scheduled a to do, a small manageable task. If I had time or felt motivated, I can always flip ahead to the week and cross something off else off the list. Get the low hanging fruit for an easy win and a burst of energy. That's really important. It helps motivate you, helps get you started. So for instance, with my book, I would do 10 questions a day, write down 10 things. That was doable. If I was in the flow, I could do more, but I committed to 10 daily and it made it go by quickly and it kept me motivated. Depending on the task, consider if you need a daily, weekly, or monthly goals. Usually for me, most of my tasks were weekly. That's how I would break them down. That 
meant the most to me. And then I have my legal page written with everything I need to get done for the week. And again, that might change depending on what's going on, but that's how I was able to keep focused. Write down the manageable steps. Maybe a monthly goal is broken down into six steps during the month. The more you break down, it's easier to accomplish and it gives you a boost. We can just whip those, cross those small tasks right off the list. That helps keep you going. Feel stuck but have no clue what you need to do to move forward? Would you like to feel energized and excited every day? Are you ready to create the life you desire? Julie's Caraccio supports you in finding the answers within and then taking action to make changes happen. Visit reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie can support you with life coaching. There are a couple tools that might help you. The first is Eisenhower box, which is named after the president. And I took a Franklin Covey class, and I think that they modeled after, after Eisenhower's box. So Eisenhower's box breaks it down into four principles. And I'm a very visual person. Google, and you can get a really nice visual on this. So number one is urgent and important. And those are tasks that you need to do immediately. Pay your mortgage. Number two are important, but not urgent. Tasks to schedule to do later. Interview book cover designers. Number three are urgent, but not important. Tasks to delegate to someone else. I'm delegating my social media to an expert. And finally, number four, neither urgent nor important tasks to eliminate. Surfing on Facebook. I also found something called the Ivy Lee Method. I'd never heard of it. And I love it when I learn something new. And I thought this was pretty interesting and might benefit people. So there are five steps in the Ivy Lee Method. At the end of the workday, write down no more than the six most important things you need to accomplish tomorrow. Prioritize those six items in order of their true importance. The third step. At the start of the next day, concentrate only on the first task. And I'd agree with that. They've done studies. You can't multitask. So when you're in a step, do it fully, do it completely before you move on to the next task. So work until the first task is finished before moving on to the second task. The fourth step is approach the rest of your list the same way. At the end of the day, Move any unfinished items to a new list of six tasks for the following day. And finally, you repeat this process every day you work. You can play around with these methods or research more to find out what works best for you. You know, I have talked about my little system. I have professional on one side, and then the little skinny column has the personal tasks that I need to do. It works for me. If I do not have a client for the day, I wake up and like, okay, what am I in the mode to do? For those of you that do any writing, you know you can just get in that mode and write for hours and it seems like you've only been there for five minutes. So if I'm in the flow of something, that's what I'm going to concentrate on. So mine's kind of a mishmash. I was trained in Franklin Covey, which again is like the Eisenhower box. And I start the year with goals in mind and I break down the smallest steps. But again, as the day is progressing, I try to be in flow as much as possible. What's important right now in this moment? Because I'm telling you guys, when I am on that game, I get so much accomplished. You know, getting my website refocused and working on the copy for the new focus was done towards the end of the year. The books took up the bulk of the year, and that was okay. I had 12 months to do it. But there were hundreds, hundreds of tasks that I did. Again, I broke them down to as a minute a level as possible so I could get it done and feel good because that's what kept me motivated. You can, with this editing thing, okay, I'm going to edit this and edit that and go through and look for this. And did I use words? Do I need to break out the thesaurus? When you break it down, it's just much more manageable. I also trust the process. I had started one of the books years ago, about in 2016. And it started it. So that was great. I had 
something a springboard, but it wasn't the right time because it was drudgery trying to get it done. And two years later, got to working on it. Sometimes that just happens with goals and we need to shift and change. I also want to share this story. I was interviewed and shared this story and somewhat embarrassing. And the guy made a good point, which I will make when I share this, because this only happened once. This isn't a regular thing. A couple of summers ago, I could not do anything. I mean, I was like, uh, I checked email and I had zero motivation. That has never happened to me. I'm always a go, 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 move, move, move person. And for two weeks, I watched The Good Wife, which eh, I don't know if I'd recommend that for binge watching, but it's all I could do. And after the two weeks, I got more done on that Monday morning of four hours than I would have accomplished in those two weeks. I just, I don't know what it was. I couldn't do anything, guys. Only time it's ever happened in my life. And so I had to honor that as part of my process. That's again why taking the breaks in the podcast, it does me good and it does you good to have a break. There's stuff there if you need the support, but sometimes we need that, that mental break. Keeping motivated. How do we keep motivated? You know, I'm a fan of the accountability partner. Cotty was this for my books. Great feedback on my content. They were great because I had to let them get the stuff and I had to commit to that. Okay, I'm sending this to you by this date. It really helped keep my feet to the fire and getting positive feedback from them just kept me going. List why you want to achieve your goals. What will you gain? What will others gain? How will you benefit? How will others benefit? My big personal goal is my physical health this year. I'll gain a better body, peace of mind. I won't be a hot mess when I'm older. What will others gain? My husband and cats get a healthier wife and cat mommy. How will I benefit? I'll feel better. I'll be able to move better. How will others benefit? The best version of me, it affects everyone around me. It affects my friends, my families, my clients. The better I am, the better others are. When we raise ourselves up, we raise up others. Get support. If you're a stay-at-home mom and need to hire a professional organizer, do it. We kind of have this shame in a warp thing, especially in America, like, oh, rugged individualism, got to go for it and do it myself. No, no, no. If you need help and support, ask for it. Maybe you need to find a mentor. That would be a great way to get support. Take a break. Doing a lot of physical tasks, then take a mental break and vice versa. Don't spend every waking minute on your goals. You just can't. You will burn out and probably not accomplish a lot. Even if something was super important, when you're burned out, it's like that two weeks watching The Good Way. I was burned out. I needed a break. And I finally listened. Now, thankfully, that's never happened again. And I hope I don't have a two-week stall like that. But I believe because I honored that, it's never happened again and never it's never, it's really rare. I like to have two days off a week. Most times it doesn't happen. I have one day off, but that works for me. Change your scenery. If you work from home, go to a work share space. If you work at your office, ask if you can work from home or go to a conference room instead of your cubbyhole. Get a different perspective. Work outside if you're able to, depending on where you live. Know where you'll be challenged. I don't know how to design a cover. I hired someone to design the covers for my book. In the past, I probably would have, when I did my course, I did my own cover. Now, this was something I was printing. It wasn't out there publicly. I'm smart enough at this point in the game to not try to do it on my own. I got advice from someone, and that was one of the things they said. Make sure that you have a pro design your cover. I have been in business for almost 10 years and I know where I'm not strong. I know where I need to delegate and have someone else do the heavy lifting. Meditate or have a mindfulness practice. This is going to help keep you clear-headed. It's going to help with your focus. And 
in general, your well-being. When you're the best version of you, you are able to tackle your goals more easily. Have gratitude. That immediately changes the energy. If you're feeling stuck on your goals, do this or simply take a few breaths. Get that energy shifted. You be like, rawr, rawr, rawr. do some deep breathing, have some gratitude immediately. It can refresh you and shift the energy and get you moving again. Create a vision board. I love this. You can have a lot of fun with this. What is it you really desire? And then you can put it up where you can see it every day and it's, it's planting that subconsciousness, that subconscious seed saying, okay, let's do this. Let's, again, we create our reality. So why not put it out there and help draw it to you? I love HGTV and we don't get that. So that serves as a motivator for me to go to the gym. I can, I know I love Fixer Upper, which is no longer, but I'm finding all these other shows so I can uh, try to get my on the machine where I can watch that for 45 minutes. So that's a little way to get me motivated to go to the gym. Don't forget to celebrate along the way. At the end of September, I got some, that might sound scary guys, but they're not. I posted on my Instagram page. They're this kind of groovy, a little bit metallic because they've kind of got a sheen to them. Turquoise Birkenstocks. Birks are so incredibly comfortable. I had Birks when I was younger and I moved to LA and they're like weirdo hippie. And I'm sorry that I set the Birks aside because Birkenstocks are fantastic. So I now have a leopard pair or zebra. No, it's a leopard. It's a white leopard print platform, which are, I tell you, I wear those all the time. Birkenstocks and these new turquoise. They really are cool. I know some of you might be scared at what I'm talking about. But this was my gift to myself to push me through my last quarter goals. I'm like, okay, you got this end of September. You've been working really hard. Here is to get you through October, November, December. So figure out how you can celebrate along the ways you accomplish. Keep the end in mind. And I believe that this is Stephen Covey who said this phrase. Know what your end goal is. And remember that. Why is it that you're doing it? How is life going to change? Why is it important? So on those moments when you're frustrated, keep that in mind. If you're really struggling to keep going, you may need to reevaluate. Maybe what you thought was important and what should be your focus really isn't. And that's okay. Don't waste time beating yourself up about it. Sometimes life happens and decides priorities for us, or we shift, life changes, things happen. Go with the flow and reprioritize if you need to. There are always reasons behind why we do something. So make sure that you're really clear Take actions from today's podcast. Clear your clutter. Schedule time to find your focus. Choose a place to contemplate and determine your focus. Do a brain dump. Categorize your notes. Review to make sure your goals align with your life. Use a number system to suss out what's most important. Choose a few goals to focus on. Start on one goal. Break down into manageable steps. Decide daily, weekly, and monthly goals. Play around with productivity tools like Stephen Covey, the Eisenhower box, or the Ivy Lee method. Create a plan to stay motivated. Reevaluate your focus if necessary. On next month's episode, we're talking about boundaries. Guys, I hope this is your best year ever. Started off with lots of love, laughter, joy, fun, and excitement. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Clearing your clutter allows you to share your gifts with the world. Get your free self-assessment 
to discover your clutter priority at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.